If you are still using ATR with a 14 period as the filter for your strategy, then most likely you are leaving a lot of performance on the table. In this video, I will show you how taking the default ATR and normalize it will be a huge upgrade for all your strategies. So make sure to stick around because I will show you the difference in the back test between the default ATR and the normalized version. First, what is ATR? It stands for average true range. Basically, every bar has a range. So for example, average true range of 14 bars, that means we are taking the ranges of 14 bars, adding them all together, dividing by 14. The difference with average true range is we are also including the gaps. So the range of the bar plus any gap that happens overnight to the other bar. Here I have the average true range with the default 14 bars on the chart. So this is the price chart. And as you can see below, we have the average true range of 14 bars. And here where most traders makes a couple of mistakes. First, they stick with the default period of 14 bars. Now this might work, but most of the times, there are better look back periods than the 14. And the second mistake that most traders make is they use this default ATR on every market the same way. And that is a huge mistake and I will show you why. So let's look at the scale of this ATR. You can see, for example, here I'm looking at the NASDAQ and as you can see, the number is currently 491. At this peak, it was about a thousand. So this is natural gas and now the ATR is 0.459 with a peak around 0.75. And if I switch to Tesla, now we are 21 and let's say this peak is around 28. So you see every market has a different value because it's measuring the range of that market and depending on the price of that market, this is what you will get. There are big differences in the ATR value depending on the market you are looking at. Now you can normalize the ATR in different methodologies. The easiest would be to use a stochastic. And there is nothing wrong with that, except today I will show you a better way to normalize this indicator. And that method is using a percentile rank. So basically we take the current value of the ATR and compare it to a previous number of bars of the ATR value. So let's say the current ATR value is 15. We look back at the last, let's say 20 bars, and we see where this 15 stands. So we rank all the values, and let's say the 15 sits at the uh, number 10. So number 10 is in the middle in the last 20 bars. That means the percentile ranking is 50%. And so now the value of the ATR comparable to any market because we are just using the rank and not the actual value. So here is how the percentile ATR looks like. The yellow indicator at the bottom is the normal ATR with 14 periods. And the cyan indicator is the ATR with 14 period normalized using the percentile ranking over the last 100 bars. And we can easily see the behavior now. So this is the ATR at the highest value, for example, and this is the ranking, again, it's near the high. So this is between zero and 100, we are near 100. Again, here it happens, we are near 100. But look at this, this is now what? It's, it's 15, the value is 15 but we are also near the 100 because now we are comparing this value to the last 100 values. And we say, well, this one sits at the top. Also look at this one. This is 10, but compared to the last 100 values, it's again sits at the top. So the advantage now, I can change the market. So for example, I will go to natural gas. And now again, I have the values from zero to 100. And if I go back to Tesla, same thing. I have the same values from zero to 100. And now if you see this dashed line at 40, this can be the trigger for any market. So when the ATR above 40, I know I am in a high ATR zone 
regardless of the market that I am looking at. In my view, this methodology of normalizing the indicator is the better way than the stochastic. Both of them works, but this one I think gives a better reading of your indicator. And of course, the added benefit to that is now you have a single value to look at. It's like the RSI above 80. Now you have the ATR above 40. So this will work on any market regardless of its price. And of course, all this is meaningless if we don't get value out of whatever we built right now. So let's use this ATR now as a filter for other signals. Now, of course, you can use it as a signal, but I will try to use it as a filter. And to do this, I will introduce to you a simple strategy on the NASDAQ market. Now, the NASDAQ is a really good market for long breakout strategies. So I will use another indicator to give us the signal to enter and exit the market. And that indicator is super trend. This is the super trend indicator. This can work as a entry exit signal. It can work as a trailing stop. So the strategy works as follows. We enter whenever the closing price is above the super trend indicator. So we enter on next bar. And then when the closing price is below the super trend indicator, we exit on the next price. We don't have a profit target and a stop loss. We are going long only because the NASDAQ is a great market for long trend following or breakout strategy. Like I mentioned, this strategy really suits the NASDAQ because it's a long breakout trend following market. And I just applied it to the NASDAQ now and we can optimize to see what we get. So this is optimizing only the super trend indicator. So this is the length of the ATR. This is the ATR multiplier. So we will optimize the length from five to 30 step five, the multiplier from one to six in step of 0.2. So all in all, we have 156 combinations. So these are the results sorted by return to drawdown. And just to give you an idea, if we scroll all the way down, so we have 139 strategies out of 156, making more than one return to drawdown ratio. That is really good. That shows you how good it is to go along on the NASDAQ index. Now, sitting at the top here, we have really good strategy. The problem is the low number of trade. I mean, this is the problem for all of them. It's, it's because a trend following a strategy. So this is 146. In fact, we can do this. So this is maybe a good compromise, which is we are making about 160 trades with 3.64 return to drawdown. So this is the strategy applied, 315,000, 3.6 return to drawdown ratio, maximum drawdown 86. 159 trades, about 50% win rate, which is totally expected for a breakout trend following, about $2,000 per trade, which is really good. So this is the super trend on its own, although it's using the ATR, but it's just an entry exit signal. Now we will add the normalized ATR, the percentile ranking ATR, as a filter for that ATR signal. So this is how the filter will work. You see now we have this entry signal and the percentile ATR is below our trigger level. So if we switch this filter on, then this trade will not happen. Also, this is another trade, again, because the percentile ATR is below the trigger level, this trade will not happen also. So let me switch on the filter. And as you can see, these two didn't happen. Now, this one, you see, because now we are above the trigger, this trade was allowed. So now on the same strategy, we can optimize this trigger level and also optimize the look back period of the percentile length. And also we can optimize the ATR length. So we'll do the ATR length, 5 to 25, the percentile length. So this is the comparison of how many bars back, 20 to 120, step of 10. And then the level, this ATR trigger, we will go from 10 to 60 in step of 5. Of course, the higher it is, the lower the number of trades 
and the lower it is the more trades you are allowing in so all in all we have 605 combinations we see that the atr look back of 10 which is by the way the same atr look back of the super trend comparing it with the past 20 bars and adding a trigger of 50 is the best filter for this strategy you see we increase the profit win rate we increase profit factor the average trade and we increase our return to drawdown ratio now this is the highest return 340,000, and this is based on an atr of 5 percentile look back of 40 and the trigger this one at 15 so allowing more trades in Let's go back to the best return to drawdown ratio and pick this strategy. This is the performance of the strategy, 314,000, 55,000 drawdown and 5.7 return to drawdown ratio. This is how the equity curve looks like, 135 trades, 53% win rate with 2300 average trade. Like all the strategies I feature on this channel, it's not about picking the best strategy the best signal, the best filter. It's always about diversifying the equity curve because the idea is when you combine them in a portfolio, that's when the time when to mix the best strategies to come up with the smoothest equity curve. If you like this video, then you'll definitely enjoy the next one.